this week on Brian Ross Investigates. Reefer madness. The old scares about marijuana are giving way to legalization across the country. Now some states even offer advice on how and where to light up a joint. If you choose to smoke cannabis, do it away from other people. Well-known figures, including former Republican House leader John Boehner, are going into the marijuana business, even as the federal government continues to see it as a dangerous business. Currently, the federal law on marijuana is the same as it's been since basically 1970. And that says marijuana is a Schedule I substance, um, which equates it on the same level as heroin. Plus, Russia's secret killers. It's called the Wagner Group. Brutal mercenaries with a track record of murder and war crimes now dispatched to Ukraine. It is, I think, a statement of, of Mr. Putin's desire to, to bolster his manpower uh, in response to the depletion of that manpower over the last six weeks. We'll get the latest from a top expert. And this week's winners and losers in the media. See if you agree with the editors of Mediaite. We've got no connection. We're sitting in the entrance, she says, and they're shelling the shit out of us. From the studios of the Law and Crime Trial Network in New York City's Herald Square, this is Brian Ross Investing. Good evening, and thank you for joining us. I'm Brian Ross, joined as always by my colleague Rhonda Schwartz. And Rhonda, we begin with the growing movement to legalize marijuana in this country. Reefer madness no more, as more than a dozen states have passed laws to legalize pot, and business seems to be booming, even as Congress continues to resist changing the federal laws on marijuana. Rhonda? That's right, Brian. And every year, thousands of people are still being arrested for possession of marijuana, while prominent officials, including House, former House leader John Boehner, are in the marijuana business. And now more states are poised to join the reform movement. A new state law takes effect in Colorado today, making it the first state to let anyone over 21 walk into a shop and legally buy recreational marijuana. At the stroke of midnight on New Year's, California will become the eighth state to legalize recreational marijuana. In marijuana madness, the first day of legal pot sales in Illinois draws a lot of customers from Wisconsin. Breaking news, recreational marijuana is now legal in New York. It's a historic day for New Jersey. You can now legally purchase recreational marijuana if you're 21 or older. We're joined now by Eric Altieri, who's the executive director of Normal, the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. And Eric, thank you so much for being here. There's such a patchwork quilt of state laws around the country. How does anybody know what's legal, what isn't legal? Sure. Um, well, it does make it a bit tricky, um, given that depending on where you are in this country, um, having a couple of joints in your pocket can go from being perfectly legal, as if you um, had, you know, a six pack of beer at your house, to being a felony or very serious criminal charge. Uh, so it's understandable that individuals might be confused going state to state. Well, as change is taking place state by state, what is the federal law on marijuana? Well, currently, the federal law on marijuana is the same as it's been since basically 1970. And that says marijuana is a Schedule I substance, um, which equates it on the same level as heroin, which says it has a high potential for abuse and health problems and has zero recognized medical value, um, which is something that clearly the dozens of states with medical programs and the countless studies that have shown its efficacy would disagree with and is completely in conflict with the 18 states plus Washington, D.C. that have fully legalized marijuana for adults. From the point of view of the federal government, still reefer madness? And the ultimate end of the marijuana addict. Pipe Hopeless insanity. Still reefer madness, still just say no. Um, if Nancy Reagan were around, uh, she would recognize federal marijuana law because it's just the same now as it was then, unfortunately. Um, and that's where we really run into challenges. The federal government needs to get its head out of the sand um, and address this tension between state and federal law and go towards ending marijuana prohibition, which is something the overwhelming majority of Americans want. And what's the impact for this gap, the lack of a federal law? Well, that trickles down in a lot of ways. Um, one, there are still thousands of people that are arrested under federal law for marijuana every year um, and deal with that federally even though most marijuana arrests are at the state level, about 98%. Um, it also creates issues in states that have moved to legalize, where since a Schedule I federal substance, 
these businesses that are springing up across the country are unable to use financial services like banks and credit card processors that any other business would do, requiring them to be cash only businesses, which makes them targets um, personally and their customers targets for potential crime and violence um, from unsavory elements. Um, and it continues to be an issue in terms of how that impacts individuals with criminal records um, for just marijuana possession, even at the state level, you can lose your financial aid for college, you can be thrown out of your public housing, you can have your children taken away um, simply for having a marijuana charge on your record, even if it's just possession for as little as a joint. Eric, are people still being arrested for possession of marijuana, even just a joint, as you say? Yes, um, that's the sad truth of it. Um, largely for years and years, um, you, despite all this progress you see at the state level, about half a million Americans had been consistently arrested every single year for marijuana possession over the past decade. Uh, we've seen that start to come down a little with states legalizing and obviously COVID had an impact. But as of last um, data that we have from the government, across this country, uh, about 350,000 Americans were arrested for marijuana possession uh, last year. And that's something that I think most people don't recognize. That's about one arrest every minute or so. And how many people would you estimate are behind bars having been convicted of possession of marijuana? Not selling it, but possession. Sure, that's a much harder number to really get a hold of simply because prison populations are very transitory and the government doesn't put out a lot of data. Um, but there's certainly thousands that are in prison. Uh, but it's really also not just the issue of getting arrested and put in jail. It's those ancillary costs for the rest of your life, those opportunity costs. Um, you're going to have to check a box on your job applications with this charge in many states. So you won't be able to get employment. You can lose your housing. You can lose your children. Um, so getting arrested, even if it's a one, two-day experience of being thrown in the local jail, you're still going to have to deal with those problems for decades to come and see your future really diminished in a lot of ways that I don't think almost anyone in this country believes it should be. As you know, for years, critics have said that marijuana is sort of the gateway drug and opens the door to others becoming more involved with cocaine and heroin. Given the legalization now across the country, what evidence is there that that was, in fact, true or false? There's zero evidence that that is true. Um, the gateway theory is a theory, um, I'll use air quotes on it, that has been around for decades and been debunked time and time again. Uh, the fact is that well over 50% of all Americans have consumed marijuana at some point in their lives, and we've not seen that transition into high levels of hard substances in any way with a causal relationship. When you take marijuana out of those back rooms and back alleys and you put it behind the counters of licensed businesses, you don't have that connection or you, and you don't see that any real transition of individuals from marijuana consumption to harder drugs. And if anything we've seen, um, it's what we call really an exit drug. There's been a huge body of research in the past decade that shows that marijuana has successfully helped individuals with heroin and opioid addiction wean themselves off of that by taking a less harmful substance like marijuana to, to substitute it and then ultimately get off the substances altogether. And finally, have you seen evidence uh, anywhere at all of uh, health risks and hazards because of the use of marijuana? Are people using it more and are they exposing themselves to some kind of health risks? Well, thankfully, um, all the scary apocalyptic visions uh, prohibitionists claim would happen with legalization never came to light. If anything, we've seen some positives around that. We've seen decreases in opioid use in states that have had medical or legalized laws and things of that sort. Uh, but, you know, that's not to say marijuana has zero risks involved. It's not right for some people. Um, it maybe it doesn't agree with them or based on their own medical history. Um, but things like that, um, you can really address only through a regulated market, through public education campaigns. New York State has legalized cannabis. And to help understand what that means, we are starting the cannabis conversation. Who can use, where to use, and how to safely use. By telling people the truth and giving them the actual data they need to make smart decisions about their bodies, their lives, and what they consume. All right. Eric Altieri, the executive director of Normal, thank you so much for being with us here tonight. Thank you, thank you for having me. Coming up next, Vladimir Putin's secret army, a band of mercenaries now dispatched to Ukraine, said to be even worse, if that's possible, than the Russian army. 
You're watching Brian Ross Investigates on the Law and Crime Trial Network.